Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. I know it's been a little while, but I am back. And for this week's video, I wanna talk about shallowing the club from the top of the swing. I think this is a very popular topic just because everybody wants to get out of that pattern of swinging it too many degrees out to in um, and slicing the golf ball too much. Now, shallowing the club is actually most of the time a combination of small movements, but in this video, I'm gonna go over three movements specifically. And like always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you are visiting my channel for the first time, please subscribe to see more golf-related content. Okay, so for, for those of you who may not know what shallowing the club means, um, essentially, when a golfer gets to the top of the swing, shallowing is when the shaft kind of works more flat gradually as it comes down closer into impact. So kind of more in this direction, as opposed to it working steep, which is more this way, and the club kind of works more in front of you, okay? Now, this is a very desirable movement just because all the best players are, are able to do this to some extent. And shallowing the club allows you to keep the club a bit more behind your hands and essentially allows you to, to swing the club in, the, in more of the correct direction into the ball. Now, a player's ability to shallow the club um, it has a lot to do with a combination of movements, uh, more so in the body, arms, and wrists coming down. But these three ideas that I'm going to share with you can be applied to any golfer and can help point you more so in the right direction. So the first movement that will help you shallow the club has to do with your hand direction or hand path in the backswing. So players that tend to get the club working more steep in the downswing tend to have their hands work more away from them or too straight back um, in the takeaway. Now the players that tend to get the club working more shallow get their hands moving more inwards and around the body in the takeaway when they complete their backswing. So a great awareness drill that you can try out um, to help you, you know, feel out your hands moving more inwards uh, and just to make sure you're in the correct position is you can place an alignment stick or a golf club kind of against the toe of your trail foot. And I've angled the stick kind of on a 30 to 40 degree angle. Okay. Now, when you sit up to the ball, you're only going to use your, your lead, lead hand uh, when you're gripping the club. And when you make your backswing, you're essentially not going to move your wrist. But when your hands go around you, just up until when the club reaches parallel with the ground, you're going to try and feel like your lead arm is parallel to that alignment stick on the ground. Okay. So what that essentially does is that it ensures that your lead arm is more across your chest hands are more around you at this point, as opposed to if your hands are moving straight back, right, your lead arm would not be parallel to that stick on the ground. Um, it'd just be more kind of you know, parallel to your toes, right? Or obviously if you're just taking it more outside, um, then it's gonna create more of an X shape to that, that um, alignment stick on the ground. Okay, so the, reason, the other reason why you use your lead arm is just so that we don't get the club head whipping back behind your hands like this. Okay, it'll just make sure that you can keep um, the club head in front of your hands just because you're not moving your wrist, right? So if you can rehearse it like this to start, just up to, to the club is parallel with the ground, make sure the lead arm and the club on the, uh, the lemon stick on the ground is parallel, then you can grab it just to feel what this position feels like. You can do that a couple times just to build some awareness of the movement. So once you get really comfortable, you can hit balls um, following this this kind of procedure. So you go one up to the takeaway, grip it. Now the second movement that'll help you shallow the club has to do with what your body is doing in the downswing. So another very common mistake is that when players get to the top and they make their downswings, depending on how they're bending their bodies, right, the club is going to move more steep and in front of them. And the movement that's involved is a right side tilt or a trail side tilt. Okay, and for a right-handed player, that's your ability to kind of incorporate kind of a, um, a side bend like this into your downswing. Okay, now when you get to the top, if you have zero side bend or trail side bends, your shoulders are going to turn very level to the ground, which is ultimately going to get the club moving really outwards and in front of you. Okay, so from the front view, that would look something like this. If you had zero tilt and your shoulders turned very level to the ground. Even your hips would stay very level to the ground, okay? So there's nothing that's gonna get the club head 
to shallow or move more downwards. So um, a movement that will help the club move more downwards is adding in that right side bend. So from the top, now if I were to, to bend my body to the right, you can see that my hands and the shaft of the club shallow without me having to move my wrists or my arms at all. Okay, so before, with no tilt, it would kind of look like this, right? Everything turning very level to the ground versus me adding more tilt into my downswing. Now, what's very common for a lot of people to, to do when they try to apply this movement into their swings is that they forget to move their pressure into their lead side. So what happens is that their weight kind of stays um, either centered or more so on their trail leg and their upper body kind of bends more behind the golf ball. But we don't want that to happen just because if your weight's not going forward and you're just adding side bends, your low point again is gonna be really far behind the golf ball, okay? So you have to make sure that when you come down, you're moving your pressure into your lead side as you're tilting your body to the right. Okay, that's very, very essential that you learn to do those two things at the same time. So one of the best drills that I know of um, that can give a player um, a good feeling of this is to actually use a wall again. Now, I don't have um, any, any space to put, place the camera on that wall, but um, I'm going to draw a line kind of straight down from where my head is. Okay, and, and just so you can see it, I, I have like a, like a small alignment stick and I'm, I have a few inches of the extension kind of beyond my trail shoulder, okay, kind of like this, All right? Now, if I get back on the mat and I place my head against the wall, okay, getting into my posture, I can make a full backswing. Now, if I turn with my shoulders very level to the ground, what would essentially happen is that, is that this extension beyond my trail shoulder would hit the wall, okay? But if I make my downswing and I add more of a right side bend as I come in, right? That extension is gonna basically miss the wall, okay? So you wanna practice moving your body in this way just so that the extension on your trail shoulder misses the wall coming down. Now, again, like I said earlier, we don't want you to obviously keep your upper body back behind you know, your trail leg without you moving your, your weight forward. Okay, so as I'm doing this, my weight is going into my lead side and my head is staying in the same spot, essentially. Okay, now this is a really, really fantastic drill to give your body some awareness. Now, once you're really good at this, then as your head kind of stays against the wall, you can just let your arms hang down. Um, I, I, you don't have to use this, I'm just kind of holding it, but um, just without a club, just put your hands together and just kind of try to apply the same feel, right? Going back, and you're keeping your right shoulder down with your head still against the wall, right? Very, very good um, awareness drill. So the third movement has to do with your wrist kind of in the downswing. So players that tend to get the club working really steep, what you see a lot um, in those players is a lot of extension or cupping in the lead wrist. So when that happens, that will promote the club to get more in front of the hands, okay, kind of like this, right? Whereas a player with more flex or more of kind of a bow um, or flat wrist will tend to keep, be able to keep the club head more behind the hands coming down, okay? So that'll help to work the shaft more shallow. Now, I do recognize that there are a lot of great players that can shallow the shaft very nicely and do have some amount of extension in the lead wrist, but... Um, so you don't necessarily have to have a bowed wrist or a flat lead wrist coming down. It all depends uh, on your own swing pattern and your own tendencies. But definitely a player that has more flex is going to get the, the club head to stay more behind them and to get the club to shallow more. So if you do feel like you are a player that does get the club really, really steep coming down um, and just too excessively in front of the hands um, and, and, and you do definitely need more flex, then here's a great drill that'll help. So for this drill, um, I just have a glove on and I just have like a plastic spoon here. Now you can um, just place the, the edge of the spoon kind of in your glove, kind of over the top of your hand. And you want it kind of running through the center of your wrist, 
Okay. Now, what this is essentially going to do is it's if you do add some extension, you're going to feel some pressure right against your uh, your forearm there. Okay. So once you have that set, now all you want to do is just punch shots here. You just really really small swings just to get a feel um, for not having too much extension coming down. Okay. But you'll feel right away if you do it slowly that if you do add extension, you get the club out here, you're going to have a lot of yeah, yeah, you're going to feel that pressure in, the, in your lead wrist there, okay? So what your goal is, is you want to add more flex just so that you don't feel that pressure, right? So when you're hitting punch shots, right, if you're able to not have that um, pressure on your wrist the whole time, then you're definitely adding more flex to the lead wrist, and you're probably going to have the club head more behind the hands than before. Now, if you do come down and you obviously – add extension, and you have this pressure in your lead wrist, then you're not adding enough flex. Okay, thank you so much for watching. So give these ideas and drills a try, and it should definitely help promote more of a shallowing of the club in the downswing. Be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Jonathan K. Moss if you want to inquire about online lessons, and I will leave a link to my website in, this, in the description box below. But other than that, I'll see you guys next week.